Before we proceed, I'd also like to just lay out our goals for the day. Okay, so first and foremost, we will be tackling a constellation of disabling thoughts, laying them out, giving them names and examples. And these are important to break down and understand because they really are hallmarks of anxiety, anger, and depression. Some of these emotional disorders that can really bring you down and cause a lot of, of um, discomfort in life. We'll provide you with some scientifically sound strategies to help combat these thoughts. And again, mostly this afternoon, we'll introduce you to positive psychology strategies, teach you some things that can be done, maybe both for you, you would enjoy doing these in your own life, but also in the lives of the people that you work with as a nice sort of supplement to what you're already doing. Okay, all of these things I'm going to be telling you about today are, are supported by research. They're based on research findings. I'm a researcher. I teach research methods. It's really important to me that, you know, the things I preach are supported by data. So take heart. They are. Another thing to think about is developing resilience to disabling thoughts. So when we're talking about resilience, we mean just kind of being strong, emotionally strong, the ability to cope with challenges, setbacks, stress, adversity, being able just to, to bounce back from what life throws your way. Resilience is related to um, a lot of important outcomes, and the disabling thoughts that we have that we can develop resilience to are really costly psychologically. They make us sad. They make us anxious. They feel lousy. Interpersonally, they can harm our relationships, right? They can be a real problem in keeping people close and not pushing them away. Physically, they can take their toll on our body via the stress response. And financially, they can be really expensive, right? In terms of missed work, in terms of therapy and drug treatments and other approaches. So these things can be combated, one, through commitment to strategies that work. And many of these strategies, you can't just do them once, right? You have to keep at them, like exercise. Resilience is no different. Resilience can protect you against anger, depression, anxiety. And it's like a muscle, speaking of exercise. So it can be developed. Let's say that you go to the gym. You know, you go to the gym every day, and you lift, like, little five-pound dumbbells. You're like, this is fun. You, take, you go with a friend and you talk and, you know, you're like, I don't see why people don't like the gym. I'm like, this is fine. And then one day something hits you and you're like, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to pick up the 10-pound dumbbells. Oh, and suddenly it's not fun anymore. And it's like, oh, gosh, I see why people don't like the gym. And you, <laughs> you're sore the next day and ugh. But something just pushes you to keep at it. You keep at it. And one day you're like, I'm getting stronger. Hey, I got some guns. One day you might pick up the 15-pound dumbbells, and soon you realize you can do that too. But you have to push yourself through this negative stuff, and you want to quit. But as, you, but as you push through, you build your strength. Resilience maybe can be thought of in that, in that kind of way. Okay, so how do we build resilience? It's hard because... You know, we can opt to go to the gym and put ourselves physically under stress, but we can't just, nor do we want bad things to happen in our lives to, to test ourselves, <laughs> right? So there are some things we can do, though. So a sense of self-awareness, recognize the negative things that we're doing, things that are not helping ourselves. This might help happen through writing, through talking, through just kind of introspecting over patterns that we've developed, but via some kind of self-awareness, Anticipating challenges, right? So sometimes we know when troubling or stressful or trying times are ahead. Sometimes they just happen and we have no idea, but sometimes we can anticipate them. So we can plan, all right, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to deal with this loss of my, my grandmother? How am I going to deal with the fact that, you know, I, this new terrible boss is coming to work with me. <laughs> How am I going to deal with this? So planning. And then using your resources. So past experiences, reflecting on those. Those are your resources, right? So what have you done in the past that has worked? What has not worked? How can you use what has worked again and abandon what hasn't? Using social support is so important, right? So sometimes I think we like to not burden people. Like, oh, I don't want to bother you with this. So we just keep it inside. 
But really, getting social support for the things we're struggling with is so important to not being alone, to breaking the ruminative cycle, to just feeling like we're loved and connected with people, hugely important. So using that social support 